IIT, Bombay, or some other top institute, you are looking at 15 to 20 lakhs. Okay. Probably now the software fang companies offer that level of salary for undergrads or even more. But consulting offers that. And the interesting and important thing is every year you can expect a hike of like 25 to 35%. If you are joining post MBA, I would put it anywhere between 40 to 50 lakhs per annum. Again, this would be your gross. So you do the analysis for the entire week, 18 hours, like 16 hours every day. So let's say 70, 80 hours a week. And all of a sudden, your client is there in front of you for only 10 minutes. So what will you speak about your entire 80 hours in 10 minutes? Is there a method to the madness that even in my 40s, I will be relevant? 69 million jobs would be added into the formal sector by 2030 and 83 million jobs would be taken out by 2030. So there's a net deficit of 14 million jobs. If an IT services employee doesn't want to be in that 14 million deficit, but rather wants to be in the 69 million input into the economy, I believe there are two ways. Number one is either Hi everyone, welcome to the Career Talk podcast. In this episode, we have with us Pawan Sati Raju. Pawan has incredible experience working in IT, analytics, management consulting, and running his own company. He has worked in India, he has worked in US, and he has more than 3 lakh followers on YouTube and LinkedIn combined. In this insightful 30-minute conversation with Pawan, I asked him a variety of questions regarding jobs, future of jobs, management consulting, salaries, work pressure, etc, etc. It was a really insightful discussion and I learned a lot in this process. And I'm sure that if you watch this interview till the end, you will learn a lot as well. So without wasting another minute, let's get started. Hi Pawan, thank you so much for joining and it's great to have you here. Hi Anand, likewise, looking forward to the conversation. My first question to you is, just tell us, how did you start your career and step by step, how you have you transitioned from software to analytics to management consulting to your own startup? After Right after under, undergrad, I started with Accenture. So I was in testing, manual testing, or I don't even remember now, but I was in testing for one year, but obviously being on the bench for almost 99% of my time. I don't know what what, the, what testing even means, but so I used to be on the bench for a very long time, got bored, took home salary, even though small, but did nothing. But so I thought I should do some work, something interesting. So I applied to a small company at that point in time called New Sigma. The reason I applied to that company was I didn't know what data analytics meant, that data analytics would become a huge thing and it would help me in a career massively. But the kind of work I got to know from my friend is much more logical. It's much more like analytical. And I always was a little more curious towards analytical problem solving. My CAT scores were always good on data interpretation. I was always good with puzzles. So I took that job. It proved out to be a good turning point for my career. It helped me a lot. Worked there for three years under a manager who was almost 65 years old. Mm -hmm. I was 22, 23 and my manager was 65. So you can understand the amount of wisdom that he could have passed on. So that was very, very, very good in my overall career development. I could see who is a good manager versus not all that stuff. Then I was asked to move to the US. I happily accepted that to work on a client location. I worked at multiple client locations, contractor. Interesting thing, I did not even get a call from Microsoft on campus, but I was a contractor there. And then Microsoft manager, my manager asked me to come and join them even without an interview. Right. So that's how tables turned quickly. But I did not go there. I then applied to close to 300 plus companies without knowing again what McKinsey is, BCG is, Bain is. But I applied there through online. Just on the portal, I hit the apply button. I got a call seven rounds of interviews i cleared that again proved to be another good transition in my career from mckinsey i moved into insead did my full-time mba there luckily mba was sponsored by mckinsey so i didn't have to spend a rupee there uh, which is usually 80 lakhs to like one crore so that was very good once again i didn't have any debt then after coming back to mckinsey after my mba i decided i don't have any debt I was financially reasonably secured. I could take some risks in the career. So I jumped into the startup space. In the education space, that was always something good. And I liked being a teacher. So I moved into the education space. It's been now four years. I spend a lot of time 
teaching students over the weekends creating products where people can learn stuff people can learn through experiencing what they will be going to do in the future or what they want to do so that they understand if it is good or bad for them so this is what at a very high level i do in the education space i run two startups blue chapter is one of them then okay. i have a few more startups in the pipeline case corner is one of them and i will be having one more startup in the pipeline in the next one to two months so that's wow. a brief intro about me yeah awesome awesome that that's that's a lot i mean that's a really amazing transition so to the people who are listening to this podcast there will be a question i'm sure people would love to know more about the management consulting part what is management consulting just for the starters so management consulting for the start by the way of all the jobs i have done i love management consulting the most just because it resonates a lot with me the now what is consulting to a starter good question imagine like what does sherlock holmes do sherlock holmes is basically solving cases right solving problems mm. right he is solving murder mysteries but as a management consultant you are solving business mysteries okay so some issue happened somewhere and sherlock holmes goes there understand what's the reason why it happened he tries to connect the dots he's trying to look through the mirrors and see what and why something has happened now a management consultant also does the exact same thing the okay. sales are going down across the entire organization fortune 5 10 companies fortune 100 companies it could be 100000 reasons but just like sherlock holmes you need to do a lot of analysis figure out what is the exact reason and then see how you can change the course of the company okay now it could be in any industry it could be in any Ooh. domain right let's just take for example hey the raising sea levels what can you do it's a problem for it's everybody in the world to Correct. any specific company is trying to increase its sales so zomato for example is trying to increase its profitability what can they so you can see the range of problems is huge while sherlock holmes is only solving murder mysteries consultants actually solve any and every type of business problem wow that that's that's a great analogy and you know great way to explain so my next question is how would somebody get into it i know you did an mba which was more of a sponsored thing uh, because you are probably a top performer but how do other people get into management consulting role what is the standard way so i did my mba after i got into mckinsey so i did not do my mba and then got into mckinsey so management consulting companies whether it is mckinsey bcg bain kearney or there are a few more top companies really uh, in the world there are a few good routes to get in the first one i would say is you go to a top tier undergraduate school let's say srcc in india iit bombay iit madras and they recruit from there right okay. irrespective of the branch doesn't matter you could be an english major or you could be a chemical engineering or computer science major doesn't really matter all you need to be is a logical thinker or the other way is like in the same funnel it is against students but mba student or it could be even a phd student from a top university okay or it could be a master student from a really top university all these are one set of paths which is the student path okay then there is another path which is for industry experts the path is slightly different they get into consulting based on their not only ability to think logically but because of their command or excellence or their learnings or knowledge in one industry domain so i joined in with an expertise in marketing and analytics okay so i was doing a lot of work as i mentioned previously at new sigma in the analytics space so when i applied i said like hey i'm good with analytics so analytics was just kicking off the world in like early 2010s and in 2012 and at that point in time analytics was just picking off a lot of people were required in the consulting world consulting is always about just like how sherlock holmes is solving through different theories in consulting you always identify the issues through data because you can't say whatever you think you have to show proofs everywhere the proofs come through data so data analytics was becoming very important so whether it is through industry expertise or whether it is through college route end of the day you have to be able to think logically that's the first step and you should be able to have that inherent curiosity to solve problems awesome i think you have 
just nailed the core qualities which are needed so i think uh, that will help a lot i'm also curious about what kind of money would probably one make i mean in general what what should i expect if i'm getting into a management consulting role especially in india so see management consulting jobs offer more salary compared to let's say any other or typically majority of the other roles probably just less than investment banking okay, oh, okay. Uh, if you are looking at an undergrad role in a iit bombay or some other top institute you are looking at 15 to 20 lakhs okay probably now the software fang companies offer that level of salary for undergrads or even more but consulting offers that and the interesting and important thing is every year you can expect a high cost like 25 to 35% right okay. like, so that career trajectory is very very steep hmm. if you are joining post mba i would re- put it anywhere between 40 to 50 lakhs per annum post mba again this would be your gross right including hmm. annual bonuses and all that stuff hmm. now if you're joining as an industry expert it depends completely on your role hmm. but again you have to see that the starting salaries might sound smaller compared to software or other roles, right? A few mm. software roles, but the, the pace at which it grows is very good. Like 40% year over year, 40, 35% year over year, consistently for five years, wow. right? Consistently for 10 years. Now, that mm-hmm. is the key. That is the bigger advantage. I would say, in my experience, there are only two or three professions which pay more. One mm-hmm. is investment, investment banking, VC world. Okay. In the Western world, it is law pays a lot more. Lawyers get a get paid a lot more compared to management consultants. Probably product managers get started at the same level, but after a few years, the plateau for consulting does not reach as quickly as compared to product managers, and they just keep on growing. This is really nice input. I think a lot of people watching this would use this information because it's an eye-opener, especially for me also, it's an eye-opener. The kind of nuggets that you're sharing, I had no idea of all these things. So so thank you for bringing these things up. Now, we have spoken about a lot about how to get inside, right? But what kind of real work, uh, if you can share from your example, that, okay, if I get into a job at McKinsey or Bain, what would they ask me to do? What should I expect? So if you join the basic quality that is expected, the basic requirement or responsibility is to solve a client's problem. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people like undergraduates or B.Tech or let's say MBA students, the common question they will have in their mind is, hey, but I don't know the industry as much as a yeah, client, yeah. E- client CEO. So how mm-hmm. can I do anything? Correct. So consultant means you are basically somebody is consulting you for solving their problem, correct? But Mm -hmm. in the initial stages of somebody's career joining McKinsey, BCG, Bain, they're called MBBs. Typically, you are helping the partner, senior partner within MBBs or a senior leader within the company to help solve the problem. Now, what would, to your question, what would that mean? What do you do, right? Mm -hmm. In the first one to two years of the career, of any consultant they do a lot of data analysis right okay get a lot of data from the client understand what the data is telling it is not just the sake of doing data analysis because there is a lot of data the first priority is to solve the problem and to solve the problem what data you need to basically go ahead and analyze and see you don't need python you don't need java you don't need any other skill to do these data analysis, all you can do is in Excel. Yeah, let me stop you here because a lot of people watching this, they underrate Excel so much, right? Yeah. You even need Excel is, is the question. People are just talking about Python and beyond, but you got a you know really important point there. Excel, uh, I love that point. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So Excel is the primary skill, I would say, right? You don't mm-hmm. need SQL. You don't need any other massively massive skill right now, right now. At least you can get a lot of job done through Excel. Now, Mm -hmm. why is that the case, right? Because in consulting, the major thing is you are doing the analysis to tell the client, right? That, hey, this is what they should do. Mm -hmm. But who is the client here? The client is not a manager. The client is the CEO Mm -hmm. or the CFO or the chief marketing officer or the chief technology officer. Now, imagine how much time would the CEO have (laughs) to solve any problem? The CEO might have probably 10 minutes. Correct. To think through, a, but because they might be solving 100 problems in a week, right? Mm-hmm. So 
if you want to convince somebody that hey your problem is worth solving or your problem is let's say this is the right solution you should be able to convince them in 10 minutes correct so it is very important that folks understand that it is not just about data analysis but it is also about storytelling like communicating mm-hmm. what you are correct. coming to an end through data so both these skills go hand in hand and that is what people do they'll just continue to improve on storytelling get better at storytelling through powerpoint presentations and then do analysis on excel this is the primary job of any consultant for the first two three years this calls for a drum roll okay. this is awesome I, i really love this okay because this is an eye opener for a lot of people who don't know the importance of storytelling of data analysis excel a powerpoint how do you really convey crisp short to the point stories to the executives i think great point pawan this is super yeah. helpful so now we have spoken a lot of detail of about the job how we get into it can you please also share from your experience some of the challenges that you faced some of the struggles probably i read one of your stories on linkedin where you talked about working on 18 hours for a project in mckinsey and then it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to be so can you share some of that yeah so see, it's a well paying job and also you are working with the ceo in as a consultant so you learn a lot more very quickly by interacting with the senior leaders compared to your peers who are working in any other job because they don't get that kind of exposure right? mm-hmm. and you get that exposure as a consultant so correct the benefits are there but at the same time there are also some negatives correct mm-hmm. so the, i would say one of the issues so to mm-hmm. say is that you have to as a consultant work for very long hours correct whether mm-hmm. it's your cup of tea versus not primarily determines whether you would enjoy being a consultant correct now i also quit consulting because i had a baby at that time i we just had a baby boy so mm-hmm. i had to travel monday through friday every week and it was getting difficult for me to spend time mm-hmm. go for the regular routine health checkups as a kid you will have a lot of checkups right vaccinations all that stuff and i was feeling guilty that i was not able to spend a lot of time and that was more important for me at that point in time so i quit but when i started i was a bachelor i had no other commitment strings attached all i wanted was to learn as much as possible so it worked out well for me at the starting stages right Got so it. working very hard pushing through a lot of hours is expected mm-hmm. as a consultant that's number one now the second thing is another interesting thing Uh, a lot of people join consulting because as i mentioned initially there is a myth popular myth that hey i will first go solve the problem of hey why sea levels are rising in for two months and then i will go solve zomato's problem then i will go solve the problem for microsoft why it did not why is it not able to sell laptops mm-hmm. then i'll go solve some other company's problems right people think that hey they can get the entire view of the business world oh. mm-hmm. that's the reason why a lot of people join but how long can you do this when the ceo is 25 years experienced individual in one industry can you keep doing this forever in consulting no you have to pick your niche your area of expertise very quickly and go in that double down on that and grow on that Correct. now that is again some is an issue for a lot of people because they expect that they will do everything because they are working hard that's a benefit that they expect but that's not the case these are mm-hmm. two major issues and the third one is of course which because in the first two years you are still experimenting you don't get that deep down knowledge of any one industry as much as you would expect so what do you do after consulting you will typically jump into strategy roles so i would say these are the two three issues but again as i mentioned this is a very highly competitive job people a lot of people want to get into this job so inside the company as well the competition is cut through right so you have to perform exceptionally high every single project like every two months there is a project and you have to keep solving the business problem so sometimes it might not work out in your favor like even you work hard very hard you might not be able to reach the expectations and i was also in one of those situations where i worked very very hard 18 hour days but there are people just have to keep moving on because the client is also very demanding correct correct absolutely this is reality and you know thank you for bringing the the real ground level challenges as well because it is not just the the rosy outcome right it it has yeah, the yeah. hard work and all of that along with it but yeah. i'm sure that because you worked through these experiences especially the management consulting experience 
and working with executives it also helped you when you started to build your own startups right it might have helped you that experience in some form or shape oh yeah, yeah absolutely it helped me a lot uh, no questions about that because it helped me the the first and the most important thing it helps you with is as a consultant you are struggling to get the face time of your client correct your ceo's time is most important for you so you do the analysis for the entire week 18 hours like 16 hours every day so let's say 70 80 hours a week and all of a sudden your client is there in front of you for only 10 minutes so what will you speak about your entire 80 hours in 10 minutes right so you have to prioritize a lot a lot really a lot for compressing 80 hours 70 hours into 10 minutes is not an easy thing and putting it on one piece of paper one page I'm not even talking about a document of like 100 pages one page right what do you write on that one page what do you speak in like one minute to 10 minutes that's a skill that you will learn that's people think it's an easy skill it's not an easy skill it's like a muscle memory you have yeah. to go to the gym you have to be consultant for a long time to build that mem- muscle memory and that helped me in my startup journey because in startup world everything seems to be an opportunity at the start until you get in and you realize that that's not an opportunity but you prioritize based on numbers you prioritize based on like your gut feeling your prior again you obviously there's 99 percent chance that you go wrong but there is at least some sanity because you are prioritizing the opportunities in front of you awesome i, awesome. I learned that a lot in, through mm. the job that i did great great that's that's really nice so we are now curious to know what is the startup that you have what kind of work are you doing when you're building these couple of companies that you spoke of that comes again down to i'm building a lot of companies but there is a common theme that i'm looking forward to that is since i've spent a lot of time in the consulting world i know the value of thinking strategically whether somebody is working in it or somebody is working on manufacturing floor or somebody is going out into the market and selling shampoos doesn't really matter irrespective of the job profile we still need to think at least we need to attempt to think strategically and what does that mean as i mentioned already it does not happen directly right you have to practice a lot so my objective through all my startups is to provide that experiential learning that hey go okay. ahead do a small project a real time project not a mock project do a small project and see learn a bit move forward then again do another experiential project move forward a bit and tie it out with your skill set right if you are an it guy how do ctos build their digital strategy mm-hmm. right and end of the day you want to be a leader and leader has to think strategically correct what is the ownership what is the responsibility that you want to have what is the goal that you are working towards so all these things is what i want to help people learn organically through practicing or doing a lot of projects and through my startups at blue chapter for example i run a cohort where people can come do a project for a real client now the next project next startup that i'm building will have multiple such possibilities of people going and doing projects in emerging areas like ai or sustainability or ev space all these things for okay. real companies so that's my whole objective of providing experiential and and the drawback of these things is that personally for me it is not a model through which i can scale up and build a billion dollar these are small if i'm Correct. providing experiential learning i can't do a mass teaching right? that yeah. doesn't work if i can't yeah. do mass teaching i can't scale up but that okay. is fine i chose this path so that at least mm. if i'm helping few people they should be able to get to the next level okay okay awesome that's that's really nice and i also see that you are you know very active on the social media especially i've seen a lot of great work that you do on linkedin i believe you have more than uh, how many 200000 followers how, how many yeah yeah 230 two yeah, so two that, that's, yeah that's really really hard work and uh, congratulations to you on that but i want to know also that how do you take time out to to invest on linkedin or on youtube channel because it's not something that will give you immediate results right so what is your approach around that so my approach is pretty straightforward. I teach students on Saturday and some Sundays because a lot of them are working professionals. They have free time on Saturdays and Sundays. So I teach them on Saturday, Sunday. I prepare for on Monday what to teach the next week, if any issues, student issues, 
cohort logistics ops i look after all of them on monday tuesday wednesday i take off so i don't work on tuesdays wednesdays thursday i prepare for my youtube content linkedin content for the coming week and on friday i shoot everything oh wow so That's yeah structured way of yeah yeah so i don't do any other thing on like tuesdays and wednesday completely off saturdays and sundays evenings i teach but morning hours i take off and that's how i man- try to manage my schedule all my startup work i try to squeeze it into on mondays and thursdays mm mm-hmm. so when i'm trying to teach somebody i should also make sure that i get the free time i also am able to enjoy my life right so absolutely absolutely no i think this is common between you and me because i also run all my coachings on on weekends i think that, that's a common factor but i'm not as organized as you are with respect to the the schedule that you have shown i think that's a that's a good learning for me to to be really disciplined and organized in that setup but i think it it is more of practice right a lot of people listening to this yeah. should also know that it's not very fancy that you start to put videos out there and it will, it will start to throw money at you right it, it's not no, no 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 absolutely it does not it does not in fact no side gig in my opinion is meant to replace the main gig it might become a main gig in a few years time but until then it's like you will always be thinking like hey why am i doing this why am i doing this until all of a sudden it becomes like oh it is good that i am doing this right all of a sudden after 3 4 years so correct 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 absolutely because i was writing actively on kora.com i just used to answer questions related to career and stuff and i wrote for at least 5 6 years i had some 7 8000 followers and then i thought okay if i take this on youtube and speak about it probably i'll reach out to a lot more people and i'll be able to put my point through a video in in a more direct fashion and probably yeah. a little more elaborative than text so that's how i got on youtube and my expectation was that i'll probably scale to 10000 50000 sooner but uh, to my surprise nothing happened in the first 3 years <laughs> it is just in the fourth year that i have started to now get some traction but as you said it, it takes a lot of time and there are places where you think you should give up right but yeah as long as you you know why you're doing it it, it probably works Uh, that's the hard thing right like it's very difficult to know when to give up and why you should not give up i still haven't figured that formula yet myself like when to give up i i usually am a kind of person i just keep doing or keep trying for a lot of years fortunately helped me out in a lot of places but that's a formula that i still need to learn absolutely so great conversation the last question that i have for you is because a lot of people watching this are also from the it world mostly the it service companies or it product companies so what is your you know mantra for them with respect to how they can survive in the long run because a lot of people have this in their mind and i ask this question to a lot of people because mm-hmm. a lot of people have this question that how do we survive in the long run is there a method to the madness that even in my 40s i will be relevant and i'll be able to sustain okay so yeah. is there is there any thought around that pawan yeah so i want to give a more analytical answer around it since i am a consultant i go by the numbers a lot mm-hmm. so i was reading a report by world economic forum recently which said 69 million jobs would be added into the formal sector by 2030 and 83 million jobs would be taken out by 2030 so there's a net deficit of 14 million jobs mm-hmm. and if an it services employee doesn't want to be in that 14 million deficit but rather wants to be in the 69 million input into the economy i believe there are two ways number one is either understand what's happening in the existing space or what's going to come up new my push would always be see what's going to come up new because the number of jobs are increasing but the number of people are very limited like emerging spaces like whether it is ai or whether it is sustainability tech just like how everybody is thinking about digitization now right look at what tcs infosys speak in their quarterly results they keep talking about digitization cloud transitions and all that stuff right i believe when i read through a lot of these things it is very clear that in 10 years from now people will talk about sustainable development sustainable tech the same way like we are talking about so if you are keen to survive i believe that being a part of that sustainability curve is very very important that now within the existing space if that's not the case then within this existing jobs it is going to be ai right no questions about that like now all my doubts are already cleared by all the readings that i have done 
So AI is going to be the no questions around that. Or the other thing that I am learning, you should tell me if it is true or not. Is when I observe a lot of hiring patterns, it is not just about whether somebody knows Java or whether somebody knows JavaScript or React or some other language or tool or skill set. But I am seeing more and more people who have a who are working at intersection of multiple things are actually preferred a lot more. Like you need to have a combination of skills. Like you know AWS very well along with react or you know something two technologies together so even if you have one primary technology somebody if they try to gain another secondary technology slowly it might become your fallback option or actually that might fetch you a lot more money that's what i'm observing would you agree absolutely i think you've got a very important point here and i also believe that i'll, I'll give a, another flavor to it that let's say if i am a general project manager then i can be replaced any time right Right. But if if I'm a technical project manager, it becomes a little difficult to replace me because I'm technical as well as a project manager. Or right. if I'm a functional project manager, then I know the domain and I'm uh, I'm a project manager, right? So I think what you're saying is absolutely right. If you know the best of the two worlds and if you are able to find an intersection point, then that's your unique value proposition, right? Then people will think twice before they touch you <laughs> than than anybody who is vanilla, right? So I think right. uh, great point there, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. That's uh, from my end, Anand. Awesome, awesome. Great conversation, uh, Bhavan. Thank you so much for taking your time and you know sharing these nuggets with the audience. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this uh, would absolutely derive a lot of value. I would also add your LinkedIn and your YouTube channel link in the comments. So whoever is watching this, please connect with Bhavan on LinkedIn and his YouTube channel. And also, if you have any questions, please you know add them in the comments and I'll request Pawan to respond yeah. to the comments as well. We'll be happy to answer comments. We'll be happy to answer comments on the YouTube channel, on LinkedIn, wherever it is. But thank you. Thanks for having me over here, Anand. And I hope this is helpful for the folks uh, watching it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Pawan. And we'll see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. See you soon, Anand. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So that was Pawan Sati Raju for you. I hope you have learned a lot and taken a lot of notes. If you have further questions, please put them in comments. Both Pawan and I will try and respond to your comments. Please go ahead and follow Pawan on LinkedIn and YouTube. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. I will see you in another podcast very soon. Till then, take care and bye for now.